Where's all the ammunition gone? This week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is brought to you by MDT. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out MDTTAC.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to the Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday we are going to talk about ammunition supply and uh, what is going on. So this has been going on since the beginning of the whole COVID problem, since the uh, civil unrest in various different cities started. But I wanted to run down a couple of facts because there are a lot of conspiracy theories, a lot of misinformation going on out there right now. Uh, what we are seeing in the ammunition market, the uh, scarcity, the, the overinflated prices, all of this, it's pretty much a direct result of supply and demand. Uh, it is not any uh, conspiracy. It's not any uh, pre-plan uh, to limit the supply of ammunition. So got some uh, some points that I'm going to run down through here. A lot of this came out of an uh, article that Recoil uh, published recently, and we'll drop a link to that down below. Uh, also, some of it comes from statements from uh, Vista um, with their uh, president, Jason Vanderbrink. Uh, he put out a video not too long ago that we'll also link that goes through a little bit of what they're dealing with right now. Uh, Vista Outdoor uh, owns Federal as well as quite a few other uh, brands. So... The biggest thing that we run into right now is uh, we have had a huge uptick of uh, gun sales and uh, new gun owners. Uh, there was a 39% increase uh, in NICS checks. And NICS is the uh, federal background si check system uh, that gun dealers have to use when they sell you a new gun. So if I go into a gun store to buy a new gun, I fill out a 4473, they take that information, uh, they call the NICS check line, they give them my information, and NICS check will give them a, a proceed, a deny, or a delay on it. Uh, so... Um, Various different organizations can get the numbers off of that. I believe this came um, from uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation. Uh, but in 2020, there was a 39% increase versus the same numbers in 2019. So that's 39% more guns being purchased uh, through FFLs, through regular commercial channels. So that's not even taking into account uh, the used market in states like Indiana, where we're not required to do a NICS check for a face-to-face, person-to-person sale. Uh, so... The, the numbers just across the board uh, have been uh, breaking numbers or breaking records. And as you looked at months in 2020, every month broke a new record uh, for gun sales. So it was just an extreme upward swing uh, in gun sales. So that alone uh, tells you that there are a ton more customers coming in uh, because I can't believe that just the civil unrest alone caused people who already own uh, their favorite defensive firearms to go out and buy more defensive firearms. There's probably a little bit of that, but that can't be uh, the greatest majority of it. Uh, when you break down the numbers, um, the increased NIC checks run up to about a uh, estimated 8 million new gun owners uh, for 2020. 8 million new gun owners. Now you would hope that everybody in that uh, demographic is going to be calling their representatives uh, to tell them to vote down uh, the new legislation that is uh, hitting the House floor. Um, but we all know how that goes, but 8 million new gun owners, um, they're not just buying guns. Uh, you're not just going to go into a gun store, just buy a gun and walk out with your brand new gun with no ammunition in it. Um, your average guy that's going to go in there is going to buy at least one box of ammunition. Um, more than likely, they're going to buy more than one box of ammunition. So a quick calculation, um, if everyone that bought a new gun, also bought one 50-round box of ammunition, then that's 400 million rounds of ammunition. 400 million rounds more ammunition 
uh, than gun manufacturers, or sorry, ammunition manufacturers were estimating. Uh, so again, huge uptick in numbers. And 400 million isn't just, hey, you know, call the warehouse and ship an extra couple of pallets. Um, that is fire up all the lines and run at full capacity to fill that need. Um, then we run into other little things like um, the bankruptcy, the breakup and the sale of Remington. Uh, a lot of guys didn't realize, uh, but apparently Remington is one of two full line manufacturers uh, of ammunition in the U.S., um, so that takes a huge chunk out of your ammunition manufacturing capability. And it's one of 10 full line manufacturers in the world. Uh, so that really drops down even the worldwide capacity uh, to create ammunition. Because while this whole process is going on, Remington was shut down. Uh, their main ammunition plant was uh, closed and they furloughed all the workers from that plant. Uh, now, since um, Remington has been uh, purchased, been divided up, um, that plant is now supposed to be up and running again. I haven't seen any recent updates on uh, what its current capacity is, uh, but Remington social media seems to indicate uh, that they are uh, producing ammunition again. So hopefully um, when they get back up to full capacity, and you can bet that they will be running on the most popular SKUs, the most popular product lines, uh, that that will help ease uh, some of the issues that we're running into. Um, but Basically, I think a lot of what we're seeing with this ammunition shortage uh, comes down to psychology. So we've got the uh, 8 million new gun owners uh, taking a huge chunk out of that. But then a great example that I saw was, um, say we have a fictional gun store, and that fictional gun store carries 10 boxes of ammunition on their shelf. And Joe comes into the fictional gun store every month and he purchases one box of ammunition. Uh, well... Joe comes into the gun store and uh, instead of buying his one box of ammunition, he hears all this stuff going on and he's a little bit worried about it. So instead, Joe goes ahead and buys 10 boxes of ammunition. Now that shelf is empty. So then the next guy comes in that normally buys one box of ammunition and he looks at the shelf and he says, oh no, the shelves are bare. I can't get my box of ammunition. So when he comes in the next week and there's ammunition on the shelf, he buys all the ammunition that he can buy. And this just cascades to everybody that's coming in. When there is ammunition, they buy all the ammunition they can possibly buy. And then that leaves none for the next guy. And so we just get into this panic buying cycle uh, where guys are buying as much ammunition as they can possibly buy. Now that strips out supply, and we all know that when supply is stripped out, um, then costs can go up. Um, unfortunately, uh, some of the less scrupulous um, dealers and distributors will really crank up prices uh, and then price gouge, and people will still buy at the gouged prices. Now, uh, this comes to where my position is in this, because I've got a lot of friends, a lot of people out there that said, well, with ammunition prices where they are, I just don't shoot. I can't afford to do that. Um, what we do is based around shooting. Uh, I have to maintain a certain skill level to be able to deal with problems should they arise. Uh, and I'm not willing to go, okay, spending three times as much on ammunition this year versus it could cost me my life. So I'm spending three times what it costs on ammunition this year uh, to maintain a certain level of training. Now within that, I am also spending off to different training, increasing the amount that I dry fire, decreasing the live fire rounds that I fire, and evaluating if it's worthwhile at this point to purchase airsoft copies of my guns. Um, actually, I uh, brought this in front of me right here. Uh, this is the Sig Sauer MCX. This is actually a Gen 1 or Legacy MCX, um, but SIG actually has an airsoft replica uh, of this gun uh, that is about $400, $500 right now. Uh, and I can purchase an electronic airsoft version so I don't have to have gas tanks or refills or any of that stuff uh, and shoot airsoft BBs to actually get some uh, rounds on target uh, as practice. I'm not 100% certain if I want to do that because I can get a lot of that 
uh, just through dry fire because it's not going to have anywhere close to the recoil uh, that an actual 223 is going to have, although 223s don't have a ton of recoil. Um, it's just one of those things that we all have to start balancing out and deciding where that cost uh, breakup is. But um, I actually checked my order history from uh, several of the different places that uh, I order ammunition from, and uh, I'm, I'm paying about uh, three times the cost for ammunition now uh, that I was uh, pre-COVID and uh, pre-ammunition shortages. Uh, but I'm not hoarding ammunition. I'm not buying uh, four or five cases when I can find it. I'm, can, I'm actually buying less than what I'd normally buy. Uh, normally when I bought 5.56 five, five, uh, a year or two ago, uh, I would buy two or three cases of 5.56 five, five, at a time uh, because I just get it in, sit down, and when we do something uh, like a, a burn down, either on a scope or on uh, various different pieces of equipment, I usually run a thousand rounds for a burn down. Uh, so that gives me a good idea of how the equipment runs when it gets hot, when it gets dirty, when it gets beat up. I just can't afford to do that now uh, because a thousand rounds of ammo is costing me approximately a thousand dollars, somewhere between 900 and a thousand, depending on uh, when. I purchase it and uh, where I purchase it from, and I'm not able to get the ammunition that I want to get. So that's actually caused a little bit of a backup in some of the things that we're doing, because whereas before I might go out and just test one piece of equipment, now I'm having to double up and triple up and make sure that, uh, for instance, if I was gonna go out and run a test uh, on this gun, then I would have a trigger in that I was working with uh, to test out. I would have the optic on that I was testing and I would have a light on that I was testing. Uh, that way all of those pieces of equipment get used at the same time and get uh, exposed to the recoil and the heat all at the same time. Uh, that way I'm doing a little bit more economically. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult for me because it makes a much longer range day because I have to set up camera angles for each of the different pieces. Uh, but we do what we have to do right now uh, to make things work. But what is the solution to all this? Uh, well, first of all, we are going to hit a point uh, where supply catches up with demand. Demand should taper off. Um, I, I keep seeing people ask, uh, you know, well, why don't the ammunition manufacturers just expand, open up new lines, all that stuff? Well, You've got two problems with that uh, from a business standpoint. First of all, this situation is not going to last forever. Uh, it is going to equalize and ammunition demand is going to drop back off. Uh, so if you were the CEO of a major manufacturing company, you probably wouldn't want to spend millions of dollars uh, opening up a new plant or expanding new lines when you may have to lay off those people and sell off that equipment uh, in another year or two. Uh, that just doesn't make a ton of sense. Then you have the uh, lead time to bring a new line or a new facility online. Uh, that equipment isn't just sitting in a warehouse waiting for somebody to order it up and ship it to a new location. Uh, a lot of times those machines have to be built. Uh, a lot of times you run into shortages with the um, supplies and materials to actually build the machines and set the lines up. So then that pushes your time out. And now you may be stretching in to bringing a new plant online when the demand is dropping off and other people are shutting shifts down and not going back to normal processing capacity. So uh, there's not a simple answer to it. I'm glad that I'm not in the hot seat having to make those decisions because um, it's difficult to uh, hire on a bunch of new people and realize that you may have to uh, lay them off uh, in a couple of months. So uh, a lot of companies are not willing to do that. I know a lot of smaller companies are not willing to do that at this point in time. They're just running at maximum capacity for as long as they can run. And from what I've been able to gather, all the, ma all the ammunition manufacturing companies out there are running at maximum capacity with all their shifts on. So they're running the machines pretty much 24 hours a day uh, with as much capacity as they can run. And that's for um, the most popular uh, ammo components and most popular uh, ammunition products. So unfortunately, if you've got some uh, niche firearm out there that you've been trying to find ammunition for, it may be quite a while uh, before you can find new manufactured ammo for that. Um, 
9 millimeter and 223 is probably going to be what most uh, companies are producing the most of uh, for the foreseeable future. And hopefully there's going to be some 45 ACP in there. I know uh, my department uses 45 ACP for a service weapon, and there are some issues getting ammunition right now just for qualifications and basic training. So again, we come back to that conspiracy theory. Don't believe that it's just all going to police departments and the military. The military is a little bit different animal because they have contracts that specify uh, delivery dates and, and all that. So uh, I'm not privy to exactly where they are in military fulfillment. But I can tell you, uh, police departments are waiting in line uh, to get pallets of ammo. Uh, and they're running into the same situation that distributors and uh, regular uh, dealers are running into. Um, they're just putting orders in and having to wait and hope uh, that ammunition will show up at some point uh, so that they can do training. A lot of that training has been backed off significantly. Uh, so keep that in mind when you hear all the conspiracy theories. Uh, really, this is just a example of shortages, supply far outstripped demand, and it's probably going to get better uh, soon, a lot of the speculation I've seen from industry insiders uh, is we may see the situation improve uh, late in the summer. Uh, unfortunately, with uh, new gun ban legislation on the House floor, um, then that may kind of override that. And again, we get that psychology thing breaks in a little bit and people continue to stockpile. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping that all this blows through and that that legislation is defeated. That eases people's nerves a little bit. Uh, and I'm hoping eventually uh, those guys that are stocking crates of ammunition in their basement uh, run out of room. And so uh, the rest of us that are actually shooting at a high capacity uh, can resupply and continue to shoot at a high capacity. So that's where things are at right now. My personal strategy has been to uh, check the ammunition sites um, that I usually buy from pretty regularly, put in in-stock alerts everywhere. But don't trust the in-stock alerts because I've noticed a lot of times by the time you get the alert, it's already gone. So you really need to like wake up and with your morning coffee, uh, check the ammunition suppliers and see what's out there. And also, uh, have great friends. I've got a couple of friends out there that will shoot me text messages as soon as they see stuff in stock uh, so I can run out and uh, buy what I need to buy. Uh, and then, of course, I try to pass it on to you guys when it's out there, but uh, a lot of you have commented that you're not going to buy ammunition at this price. I totally understand that. Um, I wish that I could do that, but uh, it makes me really, really nervous. Uh, when I keep shooting through the stockpile that I have and I have to replenish it because I just can't afford uh, to zero out on ammo or not zero out, I won't do that, but uh, get down to that last uh, couple of cases uh, where I have to put a break on everything uh, until I get fresh ammo in. So I'm having to replenish as I go and it is, uh, it is pretty costly. So what I want to hear from you guys is what are you doing to get through the ammunition crisis? Are you shooting less? Are you still shooting at the same amount? Especially those of you guys that are competition shooters. Uh, how are you dealing with this? How are you adjusting your training? So please drop a comment in the comment section down below. That's going to do it for this Mail Call Mondays. If you guys have a question or comment over anything we've covered, please drop it in the comment section down below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and make sure you click that little bell icon down there to be notified when we release new content. And if you want to check us out over on Patreon, we would love to have you. It's a great way to support the content that you know and love. And until next time, get out and shoot!